A quiet ripple of panic spread through the scientific world one minute ago, not because NASA released something, but because someone inside NASA finally refused to stay quiet. For months, the world believed the James Webb Space Telescope had stopped tracking 3I-ATLAS, the interstellar object whose arrival already challenged every assumption astronomers held about deep space phenomena. But the truth leaked tonight, and it hit like a seismic jolt. JWST never stopped watching. It wasn't allowed to, and what it found was something no one in the agency was prepared to explain to the public. The early data had always been strange. 3I slash ATLAS never behaved like a comet, never produced the expected tail of dust or vapor, and never followed the passive trajectory of a drifting rock. Instead, it accelerated when it shouldn't have, slowed when physics offered no reason, and rotated with a steadiness more like a gyroscope than a tumbling stone. Even then, officials dismissed the anomalies as measurement errors. But Webb saw something far stranger, something no model of natural object formation could account for. The object's thermal signature was the first giveaway. Instead of displaying random patches of heat and cold across its surface, 3i slash ATLAS emitted warmth in perfectly spaced intervals. Not circular, not chaotic, geometric. At first, the analysts thought it was a glitch. They recalibrated. They rechecked star field alignment. They even considered dust on the sensors. But the pattern remained. Lines of higher temperature crossing the surface like faint circuitry, lighting up and dimming with rhythmic precision. When the Webb team sent the first classified report to NASA headquarters, they expected immediate escalation. Instead, they were instructed to mark the data instrumental anomaly, bury it in internal logs, and prepare a sanitized summary for the next public briefing. But the scientists refused to fake the numbers. And that resistance triggered a chain of events that would eventually create the leak now shaking every corner of the online astronomy community. During one of the extended observation windows, the thermal lines on the object's sunward side shifted. Not randomly, coherently, they rippled across the surface as if some internal mechanism was responding to increased solar intensity. Natural bodies do not regulate heat. They absorb it. They scatter it. They crack and fracture under it. They do not redistribute it in synchronized patterns, and certainly not in sequences that repeated every rotation like a ticking clock. A junior analyst, reviewing the infrared frames late at night, noticed something the senior staff had overlooked. The lines weren't just warm, they were evenly spaced in prime number intervals. She triple-checked before alerting her supervisor. Primes don't appear in nature like that. They appear in math. They appear in engineering. They appear anywhere something intelligent is behind the design. Her discovery was quietly pulled into a restricted document labeled with one of NASA's highest internal classifications. According to the leak, this was the moment the conversation changed from anomalous object to possible construct. Yet even then, leadership refused to acknowledge the implications. They insisted 3i slash ATLAS was simply a comet with unusual albedo and internal structure. But the next round of web scans rendered that excuse useless. Beneath the shifting thermal lattice, JWST detected cavities, large, consistent voids within the object, arranged too evenly to be natural. The density of 3i slash ATLAS was wrong for rock and far too uniform for ice. It was hollow in places, dense in others, as though its interior had compartments. The leak included messages between engineers attempting to interpret the mass distribution. One wrote, If this thing formed naturally, the universe cheated. Another replied, Or it didn't form. It was built. That message was immediately quarantined from the main thread, but not before the leaker saved a copy. NASA's official stance remained unchanged until the next anomaly forced their hand. Webb detected a brief flash on the object's trailing side, not a flare of reflected sunlight, not cosmic rays, a controlled emission, a plume firing from the object's shadowed hemisphere. The direction of the jet was wrong for a natural vent. Instead of pushing the object outward or altering its rotation randomly, the plume decreased its speed. It acted like a braking maneuver, and it was timed exactly 17 minutes after a large thermal pulse. Braking is not a natural phenomenon for drifting interstellar debris. The moment this was confirmed, Space Force personnel joined the meetings. Their involvement was not reflected in any public schedule, but the timestamps were included in the leak. Once military analysts reviewed the plume event, they raised alarms no one at NASA wanted to hear. They traced the altered trajectory and reached a startling conclusion. 3i slash ATLAS was shifting onto a path that aligned with Earth's orbital plane. 
Not a collision path, something more precise, a rendezvous path. Even more unsettling, the object's rotation rate began changing, slowly, subtly, but undeniably. Random tumbling became organized motion. The axis angle shifted by less than one degree, then again, then again, as though the object were orienting itself toward the inner solar system. Ordinarily, telescope tracking would have lost the ability to resolve such subtle shifts, but Webb's instruments captured everything. Each shift aligned with one of the thermal grid pulses. Then came the oscillation. JWST's spectrograph recorded a modulation in the infrared emissions, tiny at first, then increasingly structured. Oscillations are expected from stars, plasma, even some exotic molecules. But this signal had repeats. It had clusters. It had patterns. A nine-peak series followed by a valley, then another nine, then another, forming a sequence eerily reminiscent of legacy data packets from Voyager transmissions. This discovery was so sensitive that NASA issued an internal blackout order. Communications about the modulation were restricted to an encrypted channel shared among fewer than 20 individuals. But at least one person in that channel was unwilling to lie to the world about what was unfolding in the dark between planets. The oscillation intensified over the next several observation cycles. And then, in one incredible burst, lasting roughly seven seconds, 3I-ATLAS emitted a structured waveform, something that behaved like a compressed information packet. Analysts described it as too clean to be natural, too short to be accidental, and too intentional to ignore. NASA leadership debated for hours how to classify the signal. Some argued it was cosmic interference. Others insisted it was a natural resonance. But the audio reconstruction produced by Webb's data pipeline left no room for those excuses. The waveform had harmonic spacing, something intelligence produces when packaging data efficiently. Webb captured another anomaly immediately after the packet burst. The thermal lattice brightened dramatically, so bright that it saturated several of JWST's sensors for nearly half a second. When the saturation faded, analysts saw something new in the frames, a reconfigured pattern on the object's surface. The geometric lines had shifted positions, forming new shapes, as though panels or plates had moved. The shapes were not symmetrical this time. They looked like vents or unfolding segments. The reconstruction included in the leak showed triangular plates shifting outward by as much as two meters before returning to their original positions. NASA called these transient albedo distortions. The scientists reviewing the raw frames called that explanation dishonest. After the plates shifted, energy spikes erupted beneath the surface. Not explosive, not radioactive, more like the activation sequence of a dormant system. The spikes followed a rising curve, peaked, then stabilized. And once they stabilized, 3i slash ATLAS altered course again, this time more sharply, as if that internal change had activated a form of propulsion too subtle for visual detection. For the first time in any official corridor, someone asked aloud, is this thing waking up? The question was removed from the transcript before distribution, but the leaker preserved the original version. The new trajectory placed 3i slash ATLAS on a path that would bring it significantly closer to Earth within the next 16 months, closer than any interstellar visitor had ever approached. When asked if the shift could be gravitational, one of the analysts responded flatly, gravitational to what? There were no bodies near enough to account for such precision. After reviewing the new projected orbit, NASA drafted an emergency press statement, then immediately delayed its release. They argued the public would misinterpret incomplete data, but behind closed doors, the truth was obvious. They feared public panic. They feared misreading the object's intentions. And most of all, they feared admitting something they could no longer deny. The final web scan included in the leak was the most shocking. As the telescope attempted another long exposure capture, the object emitted a sudden burst of energy, saturating the detectors for several seconds. When the overload subsided, only one frame was salvageable. It showed a faint glow, perfectly geometric, spreading across the surface of 3i slash ATLAS, like the illumination of a structured hull. The glow had corners, it had edges, it had a repeating motif across multiple sections. Nothing about it resembled a comet or asteroid. Moments after this frame was processed, Webb's tracking order was rescinded, and all future observation slots were reassigned. The official reason given was, instrument capacity needs elsewhere. But the internal notes included a single line that revealed the real reason. The object has entered an active phase. Further observation risks detection. 
detection by what was never specified. The leak concluded with a final note from the unnamed scientist who gathered and shared the files. You cannot classify the universe, he wrote. You can only delay people from seeing it. But 3i slash ATLAS sees us, and it's moving with intent. As of this moment, the object continues drifting toward the inner solar system, slowly, silently, steadily, no longer behaving like a visitor passing through, but like something returning with a purpose. And whether that purpose is discovery, observation, or something far more profound, the truth is no longer in NASA's hands. It's in ours. And the James Webb Telescope has already shown us more than anyone was ever supposed to know. The silence around 3i slash ATLAS didn't last long. Within hours of the internal lockdown, multiple observatories around the world began noticing strange fluctuations in the region of sky where the object was last publicly charted. They weren't tracking the object itself. They couldn't, but they were tracking the distortion it left behind. A subtle gravitational ripple, too small to curve space dramatically, but too precise to be random, began threading through unrelated starfield data. It was as if something massive yet invisible were gliding through space with an intentional smoothness, disturbing the background only in the faintest measurable ways. Astronomers at the European Southern Observatory noticed it first. They thought it was a data compression artifact, until three separate instruments recorded the exact same pattern. The ripple had a frequency, a pulse, a signature, and that signature matched the oscillation Webb detected just days earlier. It was as though the object was not simply moving, but communicating through the medium of space itself, imprinting its motion like a fingerprint across the cosmic background. Other anomalies followed. Amateur astronomers, those who NASA could not silence, could not lock out, began reporting intermittent flickers around the coordinates where 3i slash ATLAS had been tracked before the lockdown. The flickers didn't act like reflections or flares. They appeared in the same location at the same intervals, following the same rhythm detected in Webb's thermal data. People began posting videos online, shaky and grainy, but unmistakably synchronized. Something was pulsing out there, and it wasn't a star. Inside NASA, the tension escalated. The leaked transcript of one emergency meeting showed senior officials arguing about the object's behavior. Some insisted it must be a dormant probe, awoken by solar radiation. Others argued it was biological, like a single-cell organism drifting across interstellar space, now reacting to a new environment. But the most chilling suggestion came from a physicist who had worked on gravitational wave detection. She proposed that 3i slash ATLAS wasn't just moving, it was scanning, measuring, mapping. If that was true, then every pulse, every oscillation, every thermal lattice pattern might not be random at all. They could be signals, not sent outward blindly, but directed with precision, perhaps even toward Earth. When this idea surfaced, NASA cut the meeting short. Meanwhile, outside official channels, something else began to change. Space Force radar systems, designed to detect orbital debris, started picking up faint returns far beyond their normal range. Not solid contacts, but echoes. Discrete, repeating rhythmic echoes matching the timing of the pulses amateurs were reporting. Something large was deflecting radar in a way no natural object ever had. It wasn't enough to give a clear image, but it was enough to confirm a presence. Then came the first unexpected disappearance. For nearly six hours, every tracking attempt, radar, infrared, even passive listening arrays, failed to detect any sign of 3i slash ATLAS. It was as if the object had ceased to exist, but just as quickly as it vanished, it reappeared, not far from its predicted course, but with a slight shift that suggested controlled movement rather than drift. NASA's internal notes on this event described it as an occlusion event. But the scientists reviewing the raw telemetry had a different term, cloaking. If the object could conceal itself even temporarily, then its capabilities extended far beyond anything humanity had encountered. And that raised questions none of the agencies were prepared to face. Was the object hiding from something, or was it hiding from us? The next observation cycle brought something even stranger. A small but measurable change in solar radiation absorption appeared in data from multiple observatories. 3i slash ATLAS had begun drawing energy from sunlight in a way that increased its output at specific frequencies. Natural bodies scatter energy. They reflect or emit it chaotically. But this was targeted, selective, efficient. It was exactly what a functioning system would do if it needed fuel. Inside NASA's secure lab, one analyst reportedly asked, what happens if this thing reaches full power? No one answered. When the energy spike peaked, 
a second burst of oscillations radiated across space. This time, patterns emerged faster, harmonics layered over one another, sub-frequencies branched into sequences. The waveform looked less like noise and more like language. Not human, not any known digital encoding, but structured to the point of intentionality. When the data was reconstructed into audio, the result was nearly indescribable. Tones rising and falling with eerie mathematical purity, shifting like a living thing adjusting its voice. And then, the tone stopped. For 20 minutes, the universe fell back into silence. Then, abruptly, the object emitted something new, something no telescope had ever recorded before. A narrow column of infrared energy, so thin and so focused that it looked like a needle piercing the darkness, shot outward from the object. It didn't aim at Earth. It didn't aim at the sun. It aimed at empty space, toward a region where no major bodies were known to exist. But astronomers later realized that region wasn't empty. The beam was aimed toward the trajectory of another interstellar object, one too faint and too distant to be widely known. If the beam was a signal, then 3i slash ATLAS wasn't communicating with Earth. It was contacting something else. The beam lasted for exactly 92 seconds before abruptly cutting off. And when it ended, every sensor tracking 3i slash ATLAS recorded a sudden resonance echo, like the aftermath of a struck bell. Then, almost imperceptibly, the object's rotation shifted again. Not randomly, not chaotically, deliberately. It was aligning itself with Earth, what happened next triggered the panic inside agencies worldwide. For the first time since it was detected, 3i slash ATLAS changed speed dramatically. The object accelerated, not by a fraction, not by an anomaly within measurement error, but by a magnitude too large to hide. Whatever was powering it had fully awakened, and that's when the world noticed. Every deep space monitoring station, every classified surveillance platform, every independent astronomer with even modest equipment registered the same impossible change. 3. I slash ATLAS had begun closing the distance to Earth faster than predicted. Not dangerously fast, not collision course fast, but fast enough to erase any doubt that its motion was intentional. The leaked report described the next realization with chilling simplicity. It is no longer a visitor. It is now approaching. NASA held an unannounced meeting with key officials from multiple agencies. The conversations leaked from this meeting revealed the most disturbing conclusion yet. The altered trajectory matched no natural path, no gravitational influence, no known propulsion system. But it did match something else. It matched a rendezvous curve used in manned missions approaching a target. The idea that 3i slash ATLAS was approaching Earth the same way a spacecraft approaches a docking point forced even the most skeptical scientists into silence. They had no framework for understanding what they were seeing, and they were watching it unfold in real time. One analyst wrote, If it is a construct, it has chosen us. Another responded, If it has chosen us, then it already understands us. As of this moment, the object continues its controlled drift inward. It is active. It is aware of its surroundings. It is following a trajectory that no natural object should follow. And every new anomaly brings us closer to a truth no agency wanted to release. Whatever 3i slash ATLAS is, it isn't just passing through. It is arriving. 